Hey, welcome to another episode of Modular Makeover, where we take a Eurorack module and we turn it into something completely different. Now, before I get into today's episode, I just want to say I've been really enjoying making these videos and doing these transformations. If you guys have any ideas for modules that we could transform in this series, go ahead and leave it down in the comments. And of course, if you like these, subscribe so you can see more of them. Now, in today's episode, we're going to be working with the Noise Engineering Versio module. If you're familiar with the Versio modules, you know that the great folks at Noise Engineering have made it really easy to swap out the firmware on these. They have a whole set of official firmwares that you can change the module into. And they've also made it really easy for the community to develop firmwares by making the header source code available for us. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to add to this existing library by taking a beloved classic synthesizer, the Roland TB303, that wonderful little silver box with the squelchy voice that started the whole acid craze. And we're going to try to put that voice into the Versio module. And along the way, we're going to transform this thing inside and out. So here we go. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, you can always navigate through the video by using the chapter markers down below. And if you just want to know how to use this firmware, how to install it, how to calibrate it, there's all that information in some of the chapters at the end of this video, so you can skip ahead. So how do we get the voice of the 303 into the Versio? This is probably one of the most studied circuits in all of electronic music, and there have been many, many attempts to recreate it, usually by cloning the circuitry. But we want to do this in software, so what matters to us is not the exact circuitry, but the behavior. And again, there's plenty of information about that. I mean, look, here's an entire essay just on how the slide function works. Now, part of me thinks it would be fun to code all of these behaviors up, but it would be a huge task, and thankfully most of this work is already done for us. This is Open303, an open source code base written by Robin Schmidt. So we just have to port this code to the Versio. That shouldn't be too hard. There are, however, a few challenges along the way. First of all, the Versio wasn't really built to support voices. It's really an effects platform. It takes stereo audio in and it puts stereo audio out. There are qu some quirks to the hardware. For example, each knob is tied to its input jack at the hardware level. That means we can't make the knob do something independently of what the jack is doing. It's going to create some limitations for us. Second, the internal memory on this embedded system, this DAISY seed in this case, is relatively small. But the Open303 code base is kind of large. It won't fit. There are ways of accessing different parts of the memory on the DAISY using a bootloader, but we're trying to keep this as simple as possible here for people installing it. So I had to cut out some of the Open303 code to make it small enough to fit. Thankfully, we don't need everything that's in there, like the sequencer, for example, since we just want a voice alone. Now we want to transform the outside of the module, and the first step there is to make a new faceplate. I'm going to style this like the original instrument, and to do that, we have to find a font that gives us that characteristic title. It turns out that ITC Serif Gothic is pretty close, with one important exception, that tilted E. We gotta have that tilted E but no worries, we can rotate it by hand. Next, I wanted to get some 303 style knobs on this module. I found a company in France that makes them. Unfortunately, these knobs are made to fit on a knurled six millimeter shaft instead of the 6.4 millimeter D shaft on the Versio potentiometers. Well, we're just gonna have to replace the potentiometers on the Versio. I will use my hand vacuum solder sucker to remove the original pots and we will solder on some new ones. This was actually a bit trickier than I expected because the ones that had the right shaft length didn't quite fit on the board, so I had to get creative in tucking their legs under and then building a new support shaft for each of the sides of the pot. So here we have it, our Acidus Versio. Okay, when you first get your machine, you may have to do a calibration procedure. The firmware ships with a default calibration that's based on my machine, but we found from some, from some testing that uh, everybody's machine is a little bit different, so this calibration can really help with your pitch tracking. Before you start, 
make sure that the tuning knob is in the fully counterclockwise position. What you're going to need is a constant voltage source. Here I'm using the Mordax data, but you can use any constant voltage source that you have. To put the Versio into the calibration mode, you've got to put both toggle switches all the way to the right with the machine off, and then you're going to hold the trig button while you turn it on. When you turn it on, you'll see the two white lights. You can then release the button. We're in calibration mode now. When we release the button, we should see a green light. And now I'm going to put the Mordex data into the voltage monitor mode so that I can use the outputs there as voltage outputs. So first we're going to put one volt into the tuning jack. So it's one volt now and I'm going to plug that into the tuning input. And now I'm just going to press the button. And you can see the light changes to blue. And now we're going to change to two volts and we're going to press the button again. Now the light changes to cyan. And now we're going to change to three volts and press the button one last time. And now our calibration is complete. Okay, so you've calibrated your module, you're ready to get started. The first thing to do is to make sure that the tuning knob, the slide knob, and the accent knob are all turned to the most counterclockwise position. These are knobs that you're generally not going to turn very much. You're really going to manipulate those parameters using CV instead. Now we're going to put a gate or trigger into the trig in jack. And we're going to put our pitch CV into the tuning jack. We'll just take one of the outputs and put it through the data and into our mixer. It's a mono signal, so it doesn't really matter which one you take. They're both exactly the same. And now you can hear the sound. You can manipulate the cutoff frequency. The waveform is controlled by the top toggle switch. In the leftmost position, you have a saw wave. In the rightmost position, you have a square wave. And in the middle, you have a wave that's halfway in between the two. The bottom toggle switch controls the mode. So on the left, you have the baby fish mode. The baby fish mode constrains the ranges of the parameters to make it easier to find your way when you're just getting started. When that toggle switch is in the middle position, this is when the parameter ranges are closest to the original 303 ranges. I call this the mama fish mode. And then, of course, all the way to the right is the Devilfish mode, where you get the full range of the parameters from the famous Devilfish modifications to the 303. One thing to note with the slide is that when you hit a slide on the 303, it doesn't re-trigger the envelopes. That's what the original behavior is like, but uh, sometimes it can be useful to have the envelopes re-trigger. This was actually an idea suggested by SynthDad, and so we can also call this the SynthDad mode. When you're in the baby fish mode all the way to the left, the envelopes will re-trigger for slides. You put a trigger into the accent, you will accent those notes. It's the same thing as temporarily turning the knob up or down. Remember the knobs and the jacks are doing exactly the same thing. Turning a knob up is just like putting in CV.